All right, another episode of Stand Tall. It is January 11th. We're in the Art of War, chapter 6, verse 14. We can form a single, united body, while the enemy must split up into fractions. Hence, there will be a whole pitted against separate parts of a whole, which means that we shall be many to the enemy's few. All right, so if you're strong, if you come together, you can be whole against a few, right? So uh, whether that is consistently reinforcing ourselves in the right direction, uh, having the positive mental attitude, the mental outlook, that's what makes us whole. That's what makes achieving these daily wars that we fight, these daily battles better and easier in the long run. All right, let's go over to an alternate translation and see what Master Sun says. When you are concentrated into one, while the opponent is divided into ten, you are attacking at a concentration of ten to one, so you outnumber the opponent. Zheng Yu says, seeing where the enemy is solid and where the enemy is insubstantial, you do not go to the trouble of elaborate preparations and therefore are concentrated into one garrison. The enemy, on the other hand, not seeing your form, therefore divides up to cover numerous points. So you, with your whole force, strike individual fragments of the enemy. Thus, you inevitably outnumber them. Okay, well, he just like really goes long-winded on explaining exactly what that means. and I'm, I'm sure that uh, everyone gets the literal interpretation of it uh, and, and exactly how that equates to warfare. But for me, it says every single time that you make the concentrated effort, the more whole you become. The more you think about it, to strive to move forward and keep fighting that fight is what moves you forward and what makes you whole and what fragments what you're fighting. January 11th, if you want to be unsteady, this is out of the Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday and Stephen Hansen. For if a person shifts their caution to their own reasoned choices and acts of those choices, they will at the same time gain the will to avoid. But if they shift their caution away from their own reasoned choices to things not under their control, seeking to avoid what is controlled by others, they will then be agitated, fearful, and unstable. Epictetus Discourses 2.1.12. I think this is very, very well relating into the, the 1 to 10, 10 to 1. And as far as like shifting being whole or not, right? So they will at the same time gain the will to avoid. But if they shift their caution away from their own choices, their, uh, the things under their control, right? Seeking to avoid what's controlled by others, then you become the one who is fragmented. Then, then that is the opposite of what Sun Tzu just talked about. The image of the Zen philosopher is the monk up in the green, quiet hills or in a beautiful temple on some rocky cliff. The Stoics are the antithesis of this idea. Instead, they are the man in the marketplace, the senator in the forum, the brave wife waiting for her soldier to return from battle, the sculptor busy in her studio. Still, the Stoic is equally at peace. The Picticus is reminding you that serenity and stability are results of your choices and judgment, not your environment. If you seek to avoid all disruptions to tranquility, other people, external events, stress, you will never be successful. Your problems will follow you wherever you, wherever you run and hide. But if you seek to avoid the harmful and disruptive judgments that cause those problems, then you will be stable and steady wherever you happen to be. So kind of just like the lesson that, that's so crazy, the lesson that I took away from, from um, Sun Tzu's message was kind of, what this takeaway from Epictetus' messages is, is the fact that the more you avoid, the worse it gets. But the more you come together, the more you concentrate on what is in your control, that's what makes you more whole, okay? The more, no matter what, like your problems are going to follow you wherever you run and hide. And if you let other people, external events, and stress, you'll never be successful. But these are the things that make us human, right? So like, we're going to have good days, we're going to have bad days. You know, if every day was a sunny day, then we would never know what what is a good sunny day because we would never have experienced the rain, right? Um, it's kind of been a big question that a lot of us have been asking lately. Like, we know what happiness is, so then we can experience, like, we know what sadness is as well. Um, because without grief and misery, then we can't know happiness and elation. And that is like, what is to be human? While we're on the topic of the Stoics, you know, the Greek, I mean, the gods of, of times past uh, in, in, in that era, you know, they were jealous of the humans because humans had the ability to feel, to have emotions, right? right? Nothing is set in stone. It's like kind of up to us. Whereas like for the gods, everything is certain. And so 
if you're able to enter the cheat code and, and just live life and live forever, I mean, that's why one of the tropes of vampires is, you know, living forever. And is it actually so great? Because you get to, you get to live forever and see, but you also get to, to live through heartbreak and pain over and over and over again. So like, what is the answer to being steady and balanced and centered? If you want to be unsteady, this is what you should do. You should seek external events and stress and other people and have it follow you and not find a way to find what's in your control and just blame all of those external factors. That is how to be unsteady. But to steady yourself and to bring your troops into alignment, just like Sun Tzu is saying, when you come together as a whole against all of the things that are fracturing, as soon as you're sure of yourself, you can stand a little taller.